God who touches earth with beauty, make me lovely too. With your spirit, recreate us. Make our hearts anew. Like your springs of running water, make us crystal pure. Like your rocks of towering grandeur, make us strong and sure. Like the sky blue crystal heavens, lift our thoughts above. Turn our deeds to noble actions, ministries of love. Welcome. So church, amen. 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 I thank you all again for being here today. This is the launch of the Moral March to the Pole statewide tour right here in Charlotte, North Carolina. Give it up for Charlotte. We are starting here today. We're going to be moving up to Hickory, North Carolina uh, uh, later today, and then into Asheville, North Carolina tomorrow, then over to Raleigh and Greenville, uh, and back here in Charlotte as well. So we're going to be going all over the state, but that's not the only folks we're organizing. Uh, so my name is Reverend Rob Stevens. I am part of the, the North Carolina organizing team with the Parish of Breach and the North Carolina Poor People's Campaign. Uh, along with my colleague, uh, Sangria Noble, is uh, our tri-chair, uh, who is here, Reverend Dr. Radis Sadler, and I think George Friday will be on the way, and Reverend Wayne Wilhelm, who's our ever other tri-chair. And we bring greetings of, uh, on behalf of our national president, uh, Bishop William J. Barber II, who has called us back uh, to Raleigh. Uh, beginning in 2007, we started something called the Historic Thousands on Jones Street. That began uh, with a few thousand and uh, grew to tens of thousands of people descending on Raleigh every February uh, before the long session, before the General Assembly started uh, to make demands around the anti-poverty and anti-racism uh, and anti-war platform. That coalition built and built over many years. Uh, the last time we were in person was 2020. In February 2020, as folks remember, uh, something happened that March that made us not get back in the streets uh, since then, but we have decided that based on what has happened in the General Assembly this past year, uh, which is in many ways worse than what we saw in 2013 when Reverend Wary and Reverend Sadler and others of us got arrested on Moral Mondays for the extremism at the General Assembly, what happened last year uh, makes it an imperative uh, that we don't have to do everything together in North Carolina, but there's some things we have to do together. Yes. We have to do some things together even if we don't do everything together. That we're not going to be conformed, we're not going to be uh, united in conformity, but we're going to be united in our diversity. Yeah. Uh, that we're coming from all sorts of issues, whether it's health care, whether it's poverty, whether it's living wages, environmental degradation, criminal justice reform, housing justice. That there's some things that we know that the same people who are attacking each of our issues are the ones who are attacking other's issues. The, one, the people who are trying to take the right to choose for women are the same people who are trying to take housing rights from folks. The same people who are trying to keep people in jail, the same ones who want to make it easier to get a gun and to poison our earth. Yes. Just last session, we had a General Assembly that at the end passed $500 billion in tax cuts. $500 billion in tax cuts for the wealthy, ultra wealthy millionaires. And at the same time, they, they did more than the Chamber of Commerce asked for. North Carolina Chamber of Commerce never asked for a 0% corporate tax, uh, but that, that's what they're giving them. Uh, and then they're giving millionaires tax cuts, they gave a paltry ride, uh, raise to teachers, and they gave zero dollars to early childhood education, just after making abortion functionally illegal for poor women. Of course, wealthy folks and their daughters are going to be fine traveling to other states, but the way they put in place here is a functional ban on access to reproductive justice, and they put zero dollars for early childhood education. So once kids get here, uh, not so much pro-life anymore. And so we know that that, that stands that by this June, what's happened in other states is that nearly a third of our daycares will close if they don't change the funding. That's bad for business, that's bad for families, and that's bad for all of us, no matter black, white, poor, rich, uh, what have you. And so we're here today to say that we need to come together, uh, that we need to take back the mic from the extremists, that we need to make our voices heard, that we need to uh, make our, vo our votes our demands. Our votes are not endorsements. We are strictly nonpartisan. Amen. Just as we are uh, 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 you know, uh, militantly political. 
that our votes are not an endorsement, but they are a demand. And so that's why we're going to the polls right now, this moral march to the polls, as we get to uh, March, uh, uh, March 5th, which is going to be the end of early voting. You know, early voting has already started. I'll come back with some other things that we're talking about on the statewide tour, but we are thrilled to be here today. And if I could invite my sister, Leslie Oliver, to come up, who's going to lead us into our first song, because we know that there's no movement without music. That's right. The music is not tangential. The, 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 car, the cultural arts is what gets us in place and gets us in line and gets us in step uh, so that we can go forward together and not one step back. So I say forward together. Not one step back. Forward together. Not one step back. Forward together. Not one step back. Good morning. My name is Reverend Leslie Oliver, and I want to help. I need help leading this song. You just repeat after me and we'll go from there. Somebody's hurting our sisters and it's gone on far too long. Yes, it's gone on. Pop your hands. Yes, it's gone on. Well, somebody's hurting our brothers and it's gone on. Assistance 
that I am approved to receive by the state for my two children. Where are the resources? These children live in communities where the air is unclean and trashy. The same air that blows in the wind is used as blankets to cover human, homeless bodies. Some alive, some dead when uncovered. Where's the affordable house? These children are witnesses of this immorality. Knowing poverty is the fourth leading cause of death to our nation. We die because we are poor. My name is St. Priya, and this is why I am marching on March 2nd into the polls. Amen. 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 Greetings. My name is Ella. My name is Lena. My name is Braylon. And we are staying here for the now, past, and present future. I am 11 years old, and a 30 year old me wants to have a good job and uh, that pays good money. I'm sorry. Amen. That pays good money. Raise the work way. Hallelujah. <laughs> the 20, the intimidating old me wants to go to college. That should be free. Yes. And the 30 year old me wants to have her own house. That don't cost too much. <laughs> and my mama's health care. And that's why we are marching on March the 2nd. Yes. Amen. Yes. 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 Amen. Thank you so much. All right, y'all. Thank you, thank you. And also, I want to speak for Najee James. He could not make it, but Najee is directly impacted. Uh, released in 2019. He's having issues from finding housing. He's having issues finding employment. He's having issues due to the long-term prison sentence of 10 years from a 14-year-old child to a 24-year-old child. Now, mental health is a major concern, so he just wanted to address those issues. So now I would like to call up Reverend Sadler. Oh, you got oh, one. Sorry. Sorry. Then, sorry. You got to say Reverend Sadler. Now, that's sorry. I, now I'm interrupting Reverend Sadler. That's not good. Um, you will hear from Reverend Sadler, I promise. Uh, but this time, I do want to uh, ask Sister uh, Powell to come up. Uh, Reverend Diana Powell has been a warrior uh, with us uh, in this work for many years across the state. Uh, works to justice served, has been impacted by these injustices, and works with folks on the ground. Uh, how many of you uh, know uh, someone who has had a bad experience with the healthcare system? Uh, how many of you uh, know someone who has had, uh, uh, hasn't had all the resources they need in their schools? How many of you uh, know someone who's had a mental health crisis and instead of getting services has gotten sanitized? How many of you know someone who has had to decide between whether they're going to go to work or pay for child care? So these things are happening to all of us. Uh, I know if, if, they, if they don't fund, I'm early childhood, this is selfish. I got two of them in there. Uh, and they better be some good kids when they grow up for what we're paying for childcare. Uh, because if they have to raise the rates on us, one of us is gonna have to stop working. Uh, because it just doesn't make sense. It, the, the whole system is broken. There's no reason that for some reason we wait till five to think that it's, uh, it's, it's the state's job to help with education. Uh, these things are impacting all of us. They're going to impact our daughters, our sons, our children, and our families. So we know that even as we have people here speaking, that this is going to impact all of us. I'll say a word more later about some of the specific policies that we're targeted on. But Reverend Powell, I want you to come forward and speak from your experience and from your heart uh, on what this, uh, why you marched on March 2nd. All right. Matt. Thank you, Reverend Rob. Um, on behalf of individuals that are returning um, back into our society from prison and jail. That is called reentry. And upon their reentry, there are many boundaries, uh, barriers that are there that are preventing them from moving forward. And because that lands them in the system of poverty, of what we are fighting for today, if we don't get the change that they need, they will reenter back into society. And one of the things is they can't find um, good jobs that are paying good wages. So they get a little discouraged, and that returns them back into a system that they are fighting to stay out of. Yeah. People that are inside that are looking to come out into a society for people that are fighting for them mm. yes, to sir. be able to stand still and say that I am a part of this society. Yeah. I was born in this society. I have a right to be in this society. Yeah. I have a right to live in this society. Right. So we must raise our voices. Yes, we can right. no longer be silent. We gotta stay in the movement yes, because right. it can't be just a moment. It has yes, to be a movement. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, that's right. Amen. 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 Amen
going to ask the question, why are we spending so much money on sending people to prison instead of sending them to college? I'm going to ask uh, our uh, newly uh, minted tri-chair of the North Carolina Poor People's Campaign, who is a theologian, an activist, a scholar, uh, and a warrior uh, for justice, uh, Reverend Dr. Rodney Saller, to come forward uh, and to lead us through uh, some of the uh, Charlotte faith leaders who are also uh, moving with us, uh, knowing that uh, for, for those of us in this movement, and that uh, we can't separate uh, faith from justice. That our faith is actually what calls us to the work of justice, that they are intermingled. Uh, and to take back the mic from the extremists uh, who would have us think uh, uh, otherwise. So, Dr. Sadler, let's give it up for you as you take us through uh, the faith meeting. Thank you so much, Rob. Thank you so much, Reverend Powell, for that stirring worship there. That stirring, uh, rousing worship. You heard me say worship. Yeah. Worship that yeah. was going on. Yeah. Let's start off today. I want to hear a voice of a rabbi here, Rabbi Rich, Rachel Jurovitz, uh, who's come down from Raleigh today to say that we need to stand together as a state to deal with issues of poverty. Rachel, would you come, please? Thank you. Amen. Thank you, brother. I, I'm learning from Reverend Dr. Sather. I actually have things electronically now. This is quite extraordinary. So friends, I'm Rabbi Raquel Jurovics. I have the honor of serving as the rabbi in residence for the Episcopal Diocese of North Carolina. I have a few things to say about the very notion of equality and, and what that means when we have so many poor people in our midst. So in Hebrew scripture, we are told over 36 times that we should treat the stranger as the homeborn, erasing the line between the stranger and the homeborn which means that we don't get to distinguish between people who are the in-group and people who are the out-group who don't need our attention. And we're giving very diff we are given very detailed directions about how to make sure that the bounty of the earth that we have been given to sing us is shared amongst everyone in the community, stranger or homeborn. In Christian scripture, Jesus makes it quite clear that there's no difference between people we think of as the least mm -hmm. and the highest we can imagine, which Amen. is divinity itself. What you do for me, what you do for them, you're doing for me. Yes. Right. What you don't do for them, you're not doing for me. Well. So that does put us and the Holy One in whose image we are made up the same level, no matter who we are, and especially if we're not well regarded by other people who seem to have more than they need. In the Holy Quran, they are, uh, our Muslim brothers and sisters are taught repeatedly that giving food to someone who is hungry before you yourself eat is a path to peace and therefore a path to paradise. Yes. We have an eaten on this planet. We have more than we need yes. and we do not share very well. So we are, we the repairers of the breach, the Poor People's Campaign, are leading a moral march to the polls, arriving in Raleigh Saturday, March 2nd. Early voting has started in North Carolina, yeah. and the march is part of an effort to mobilize millions of poor and low-income voters in this state who can change the outcome of the coming elections. Together, all of us, equally citizens, together we will change these outcomes. Amen. And together, we're going to move forward, not one step back. Yeah. Woo Thank, Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Rabbi Durable. I uh, would love to hear right now from a woman who is in charge of the Charlotte Clergy Coalition for Justice and pretty much in charge of so much that faith community does in Charlotte. Uh, Dr. Wary calls her the Holy Spirit because she's always there. Reverend Nancy Redrick, will you come up and tell us why we need to go to Raleigh on March 2nd? Well, as you can see, I am not the Holy Spirit or the Holy Ghost, but I am the embodiment, so all he's right. all right. Amen. Okay, uh, let me pull together. Yeah, I had all my little stuff together. Everybody's using technology today, so let me find, get to mine. Thanks. 
So first I want to say good afternoon to everyone that uh, saw it fit to come out yes. to stand with us on this journey to Raleigh on March 2nd. Amen. I'm here to speak to Charlottetines in particular, but the message transcends throughout the state of North Carolina and beyond. Charlotte is a vibrant city with a growing economy. But unfortunately, this prosperity has not been equally shared by all residents. We've heard that said. Yes. The lack of affordable housing options has left many individuals and families struggling to find stable and secure housing. This situation is exacerbated by the inter intertwined challenges of poverty and involuntarily homelessness, yes. creating a cycle that is difficult to break without targeted intervention and support. Yes. So as faith leaders and community and officials, it is imperative that we come together to address this issue head on. Yes. We cannot afford to turn a blind eye to the struggles faced by our neighbors who are experiencing involuntary homelessness or living in inadequate housing conditions. Today, we are committing to a multifaceted approach to tackle the housing crisis in Charlotte. And this message can be taken outside. That's right. This approach will include, and I have five things that I want to list. Increasing affordable housing stock. Amen. Yeah. Supporting homeless services. Yes. Promoting economic opportunity. Yes. Community engagement and empowerment, which is what we're doing today. Amen. And in closing, ensuring sustainable wages. Yeah. We don't have housing because it's not enough. We don't have housing because there's not enough income coming into the homes yeah. so that people can afford their housing. Talk about it. Affordable housing is not the problem because if you have the funds, you can afford it. So what our problem really is, is insufficient wages, Amen. insufficient wages for our people to own the homes that they desire. Amen. So we need to shift the language. Affordable is a negative connotation that started during the Reagan administration. Mm -hmm. And we have bought into it and we use it. When we drive around the city of Charlotte, we see plenty of building going on. The only reason why our community who work so hard are not living in it, again, it has to do with wages. Wages has a lot to do with health care, has a lot to do with why we continue to have recidivism within our uh, incarceration rates going out, because they want to provide for their families. So we are here preparing for March 2nd to head to Raleigh to tell our elected officials, take your hands off of what belongs to the people. Yes. Yeah, that's right. Take your hands off of what belongs to, to the people. Yes. Amen. Yeah. Praise God. Thank you. Praise God. Thank you so very much, Reverend Glenn. I so appreciate that. How about we say that together? Take your hands. Take your, take your hands. Off of what belongs to the people. Off of what belongs to the people. Amen. Amen. I want to bring up another speaker here, a man who's like a brother to me. I guess we went to jail together, didn't we? We did. Uh, and a man who is the, the shepherd of this particular house, Dr. Peter Wary. Would you come up, please? Amen. 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 Have you done anything about housing around here? Yeah, I think we did. Um, so I'm Peter Wary again, and I'm the lead pastor here at the field, Mayfield Memorial Missionary Baptist Church, as Dr. Sander has said. And I'm standing here as an advocate for uh, so-called affordable housing. Um, but I want to call it justice housing. Come on down. Yeah. Uh, because affordable is such a relative term. What's affordable yeah. for you may not be affordable yeah. for me. Yeah. Our church has been deeply involved in this space in, in, at a molecular level 
for, I guess, over 10 years now, uh, since I've been here, only 17. And I can tell you that we committed to it because we saw uh, here on Ground Zero, this corner of Sugar Creek and Argyle, bounded by Muncie. Yes. We have seen the pain of people yes. whose only sin is living in one of the richest cities in the world mm. without adequate wages. Yes. I saw a mother pass out on a bus stop up here in front of what is now the Bojangles mm. because she was exhausted from working two jobs and the father of her teenage daughter living with them working one job and he only had one because he was a felon. He was a felon because he had speeding tickets in South Carolina. Mm. So what I'm coming here to advocate for is the fact that there are so many systems, structural ideas stacked against people who just need a chance to live a full life. Same. That we must be active in moving the dial. Yeah. Jesus tells this story about uh, a Samaritan who uh, meets a brother fell down, who fell down uh, from robbers along the road. And, and the story, without telling it, centers someone who was reviled and not looked well upon by the culture. Mm. This is, a, a parable is not a, a pithy little story. A parable is a, is a subversive story with a yeah. little backhand in yeah. it. And the reason that I bring the backhand up is because Dr. Sadler and some others of us went to Raleigh and sat down across the table from legislators calling ourselves having a teach-in, but we found the class truant. Yeah. They were state legislators and senators, and they told us that the church ought to do for the poor, that the faith community and synagogues and masjids and, and mosques ought to do for the poor what we came to petition them to do. Yeah. And our response was simply, that you don't even understand the problem because the scale of the problem is clear you don't understand it because the scale of the problem makes that an impossibility. We came here, we said, to join in partnership with you. It was clear they didn't want partners. So I'm here to say that what we need to do is to recenter uh, the person in the story, the protagonist in the story to be the one who is put upon and, and mistreated, but also the one who is not popular, who comes to the General Assembly with deaf ears awaiting them, who goes to the General Assembly and declares, we are moving forward together and not taking one step back. We are standing here because we must declare that justice has to roll down like waters and righteousness like a mighty stream. We're already doing our part. We're in the community. We've got a whole team of health ambassadors scouring this community, pointing people to medical resources. We're in the community providing food and, and providing health care to women because their bodies now are the property of the state should they become pregnant. We're here doing our part in affordable housing, a drop in the bucket for the problem in Charlotte because we know that it is uh, that, that your income, your zip code, is more likely to define your outcome than anything else in America. And so we created a good zip, a good address, right here in a disinvested place. We are going to Raleigh to recenter the story yeah. around the unlikely people that will make a difference. We need to change some seats. We need to vacate some spaces. We need to flip some districts. We need to set up war rooms, I hate the metaphor. We need to set up activity rooms so that we can register and educate and mobilize voters. We need to leverage this majority. This is the moral majority. There are more with us than there are against us. That's why we're going to Raleigh. Y'all ought to come on and go with us. Because we ain't gonna let nobody turn us around. All right, I think we've been to church now. It's time to take an offering. I think you're left with brother. I'm here today to say that my brothers and sisters, we need today a movement. We needed a movement in part because we have a twisted moral vision that Dr. Wary just pointed out as concerns the poor in America. 
We imagine the poor are less worthy of those things that most of us readily enjoy. I was in the city council meeting here in Charlotte last Monday and saw how this manifests itself not just in our personal opinions, but also in our public policy. In order to appease the wealthier residents of the fourth ward, the city council determined that it should criminalize poverty. That's right. I know that sounds kind of harsh, but what they said is that they should fine or arrest people for public urination and public defecation and for lying prone in public spaces. They did this without first establishing any means to take care of yourself. I don't know, I'm a human being, I have to go to the bathroom sometime. Yeah. If I didn't have a place to stay, I might need to lay down on the street, on a bench sometime. But they did this without even providing public accommodations for the people in this city. In essence, we as a society seem not only to dislike the poor, not only to blame the poor for their poverty, but we want to criminalize them, to make it harder for them to survive. Perhaps instead of passing ordinances that victimize the poor, we should pass ordinances that humanize them. Maybe they should have passed an ordinance that said, if you're a business in Charlotte, you should open your doors to anyone, not just the wealthiest Charlottean, but to everyone who might have a need. Maybe we should have said that instead of criminalizing the poor, we should build affordable housing. Yes. We should make sure that people have an opportunity for a living wage. Yes. We should make sure that people have an opportunity for opportunity. Yes. Yes. You know, they say we're 50th out of 50 in upward social mobility as a city. We need to do something to change that narrative so that all people can thrive. You know, that's why we need today a poor people's campaign. With poverty as the fourth leading cause of death in America, with poverty increasing particularly among black and brown and poor African and white Americans, we need a movement. We need a movement that will follow the Leandro decision and ensure that everyone has an equal right to a quality education in the state of North Carolina. We need a movement. We need a movement that will ensure that health care is available to each and every member of our society, regardless of their income That's right. or their lack thereof. We need a movement. We need a movement that will ensure that each and every citizen has the ability to vote. That's right. In every neighborhood. Every neighborhood. In every zip code, equally. We need a movement. We need a movement that will remind us all that each and every one of us could end up being poor. You better tell them. You miss one or two paychecks. You have that serious medical crisis Uh that hits you unaware. We have a natural disaster. We might end up being poor. You see, the poor are not a separate group of people. The poor are us minus opportunity and wealth. We need a movement that will awaken our understanding that the way that we treat the poor is not just the way that we're treating our brothers and sisters, it's the way that we treat God. In the book of Matthew, the 25th chapter, the 31st to the 46th verses, we hear Jesus say, I was hungry and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, you welcomed me. I was sick and you cared for me. I was in prison and you visited me. And the people were scratching their heads. When was it that we saw you in any of these conditions? And what the Lord says was that, whatever you did to the least of these, to the least, my brothers and my sisters, you did to me. You see, the way that we treat the poor in the country is not just the way that we're treating people, it's the way that we're treating our God. So when we see that brother or sister sleeping underneath a bridge on the corner of of, of West Sugar Creek, we should recognize that's not just a brother sitting there. That's the way we treated God. We We see that sister trying to sleep uptown on a city bench, being harassed by the police officers and told that she's going to be fined if she doesn't get up and move. That's not just a woman there. That's the way we're treating God. God. 
Amen. Yes, sir. When we see what's going on with unwed mothers who are trying to raise families by themselves, yes, yes, trying yes. to make ends meet Come without on. any resources, guess That's what? Right. That's the way we're treating God. God. That's, That's right. the way we're treating God. Right. Is this the way that we want God to think about mm. us? That you treat me in this way. We need a movement today that reminds us that the poor are sacred, the poor are equally human, that the poor are us. Yes, we are. No, 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 I'm sorry, I'm wrong. That the poor are God. Mm -hmm. And we need to make sure that we're treating people in the way that God wants them to be treated. As we sit here today, we're talking about passing millions, billions of dollars to send across the world to fight a war in Ukraine, to, per to perpetuate the impression of a group of people in Gaza. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Wouldn't it be nice if we took $14 billion and put it into our neighborhoods to make yes. sure that our poor people were able to be uplifted once and for all? Mm -hmm. yes. We gotta change this military narrative in our country. Right. We need a movement today that will foster the change. And I just wanna say, this is not all bad news, because I think we have a movement. Yes. Yeah. It's called the Poor People's Campaign. <laughs> We have that movement. It's called the Repairs of the Breach. We yes. have a movement, and this movement is leading us to march to the polls right. on March the 2nd in Raleigh. How many of you all want to be part of this movement? Yes! How many of you all will show up and stand up and march together as part of this movement? How many of us will continue to work until the change we're seeking finally comes about? Yes. Amen. 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 So how about we say this together? Let's move forward, forward together. together. Not one step back. Forward together. Not one step back. Forward together. Not one step back. God bless you all. Yes, yes, yes. So church, amen. Amen. We have lots of sadness and taking us to, to, to Bible study in the church. Uh, can't help himself. Uh, thank you, Dr. Sadler. Thank you all for being here. from our budget. That's billion with a B. Say B. 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 It's different than million with an M. Yeah. The $500 million that they're going to spend is on these vouchers, which has its roots in the 1960s when the schools in the 70s when they desegregated and they created segregation academies. But they've been trying to get these public dollars for private schools that can, uh, well, they say legally, but we would say unconstitutionally, discriminate against yeah. people. Yeah. Some of the largest folks who are already getting these vouchers in their charter say that non-Christians can't go to their school, that people who believe, um, you know, as if um, they believe in gay marriage, I uh, heard someone say that, said, uh, do you believe in gay marriage? said, yeah, I've been to a few, too. Um, <laughs> but that, that, that if you, if you uh, have any, if you have parents who are safe, gender loving, if you have anything that doesn't fit with their very narrow, Euro, white-centric way of life, Christian way of life, then you're not allowed to go there. And those are our tax dollars. Yeah. $500 million. They actually got rid of the, the cap, of, our, of the income cap. So the millionaires who are getting tax cuts from that $13 billion are now going to get subsidized to send their kids to schools that discriminate against all of our kids. Mm. Does that seem like good government? Not at all. No. That's in criminal. That yeah. does seem criminal. And so what we know now is that we have to have a campaign because this is going to start in the fall. Yeah, yeah. And churches, uh, I no knock against them because churches, a lot of churches are struggling. They're going to start propping up schools. And every other private school, guess how much they're going to increase their tuition by? Cool. The exact same voucher number that they're going to get from each student. Cool. So the same folks who are already going to these schools are just going to get helped out. These schools are going to get subsidized. Schools are going to start closing by this time next year, mm -hmm. especially in rural North Carolina. That's why we're going to the, to the state uh, uh, Supreme Court on Thursday where they're going to rehear Leandro, uh, which is based on the constitutional provision that was fought for and signed by black and white folks in the 1860s. That North Carolina gave us a right to public education that we don't have in our federal constitution. 
but that gives us one here. Amen. And so even in the midst of all this, in the face of what we are seeing, in the face of a Speaker of the House more, who just two days ago says that early voting is just too long. <laughs> he said early voting is just too long. They tried to cut early voting from 17 to 10 days 10 years ago, and the movement stepped up. Amen. They tried to cut uh, same-day registration, the movement stepped up. Yeah. They tried to pass all these attacks on voting rights, the movement stepped up, we took them to court, we fight them in the courts, in the streets, and in the ballot box, and we won. And we, won. Yeah. we took them to federal court, and they said that this, that not only were the maps uh, you know, cutting out black people with surgical precision, but that these were intentionally discriminating against black and poor people in North Carolina. So they're gonna try it again. Oh, yeah. uh, that's why, you know, the, the power corrupts, the ultimate power, so they're just gonna keep on getting more arrogant because they have passed laws that are in effect that we need to pay attention to that to make it harder to vote. That's right. Because you can't do all this nonsense and then just let everybody vote, right? Amen. You gotta start making it harder to vote if you're gonna pass all of this stuff. Right. And so we are coming, we know that 41, so hold up, 41, Nearly 41.5% of the electorate in North Carolina is poor and low income. That's right. If only 19% of that 40% votes who haven't voted before, the whole math changes for North Carolina. Amen. And you know what? If the math changes in North Carolina, it changes in the nation. The math doesn't work for the extremist right wing if they don't have North Carolina. That's why all eyes are on North Carolina this year again. And certainly, if we can change North Carolina, we can change the South. We can change the South, we can change the nation. Yeah. We can change the nation, we can make it a heck of a lot safer for the rest of the world. Yeah. And so we are focused on March 2nd. We're coming to Raleigh. Uh, we'll be there gathering at 10 a.m. Uh, if your organization isn't signed up as a partner, go ask someone why. No, you can go to ppc-nc.org, and you can find all the resources to sign up as a mobilizing partner, places to register your bus, to find a bus, to get uh, the materials so that you can spread the word in your faith communities, in your organization, in your labor unions, and all across so that we can That's be... Right. Uh, and when, uh, when are we going to Raleigh? March, March 2nd. 2nd! When are we going to Raleigh? March, March 2nd. 2nd! So the Mass Poor Peoples and Low Wage Workers State House Assembly. And we're all march on Raleigh and to the polls. And this year, uh, we're not going alone. 30 other states are going to be marching on the state capitol on March the 2nd. 30 other states. A movement born here in North Carolina that has gone across the nation. And so we are going to be showing an incredible an historical show of power. That poor low income folks, when we come together, when we fight together, when we walk towards each other, as Reverend Johnson says, so that one day we can walk with each other, that we can change the state and change the nation. So we thank you for being here. I'm going to ask, uh, before we do our final closing song, and then Reverend Flag, Flag is going to close us in prayer, uh, that St. Greer is going to give you some instructions. Because, you know, I know everyone here wants to know what to do, right? You didn't come here just to be here to hear some wonderful speeches, but to hear what we're going to do next. And so we want to leave you with a, a stack of flyers uh, to go and canvas your communities, to put them up. If each person can find three places you go, whether it's a convenience store, a gas station, uh, your faith community, uh, a beauty salon, a barbershop, to take one of these big signs, and I'll have some of the big signs too, uh, to put them up. And each of them have a QR code so you can sign up to be there uh, in Raleigh on March 2nd. So thank you again for being here forward together. Not one step back. Thank you. I want to thank you all once again for coming, for being here, and once again to the nation and to all that are here, if you are willing to help us help ourselves for the minimum wages, for our voting rights, for our worker and labor rights, for our affordable, adequate housing. Uh, we want to end the gun violence. They're they, they passing gun laws and building more uh, prisons, but we don't have anything in our communities. We want clean air. We want clean water. We want environmental justice. We want criminal justice reform. We want fully funded education for our, our kids. You just heard my children say they want to go to college. Amen. And they want it to be Amen. free. And I can't afford it right now. So we need fully funded uh, education. Yeah, yeah, and we yeah. also need to end systemic racism. Yeah. Right? From here, we're going to Hickory. We're going to have a press conference in Hickory and then on to Asheville. You are all welcome to join us and we're going to do this moving forward together, not yeah, one step yeah. back. Thank you. You know, the way we do uh, press conferences, it feels like a rat. I kind of forgot what it was So, but if any members of the media, do you have any questions you want to ask before we go? I know if I want to grab an interview, we'll, we'll 
we'll set that up. But any questions that you have before I want to make sure that you have the opportunity? No, I was going to say, we're just going to get the interviews. Okay, you want to just set some interviews, okay. Yes, ma'am, can you say where you're from? Great. Um, and I wanted to ask, uh, we, there was a mention of speaking to legislators who had deaf ears. Yes. Um, I'm wondering how, is, is it just bringing out numbers that's going to make them listen? Do you believe they will listen or that there is a electoral, that, that there is a candidate that can? Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you, but they, that the live stream might not be able to hear you. Um, yeah, should I, should I start over? No, you're fine. It's not on. Okay. Hello? Yes. Yeah, <laughs> Sorry. You can recap, Rick. Yeah, so there was talk about um, meeting with people in the General Assembly that uh, were not really responsive to their requests yes. and pushed yeah. uh, the responsibility of uplifting the working class onto fake communities. Um, I'm wondering what uh, the Poor People's Campaign is hoping to um, accomplish or what you believe the goals are with, uh, if there is a candidate uh, that you believe will be able to um, field your demands. Yes, and so, uh, one of the things about our movements is that we don't decide what we do based on what, whether or not we think that they're going to be nice to us and say yes. Mm -hmm. We do it based on whether it's right. Amen. Uh, there is some pragmatism out there that says we only ask for what we can get. Uh, that we, we would still be a long way back if that was our organizing principle. So we are, we do uh, believe in kinky and nonviolence, and part of that step is the first one is going to be. Okay, yeah, come on. Is to uh, is to is that we you have to do the research, and then we do offer folks the opportunity to change. That we know that uh, if you preclude the, the possibility of change in others, then they preclude that possibility of change in yourself. Amen. And so we believe that they can change. Yeah. Number one, no matter what you know, it, you know, it, it's not necessarily about their personality, more burger. That's kind of not the point right now. We care about them as human beings, but right now they're public uh, folks who are causing harm. So we're gonna give them the opportunity. On Tuesday, we're going to rally for a press conference. And we'll be delivering letters to the leadership of both sides of the aisle, uh, with faith leaders and impacted folks, uh, saying that we wanna meet. So we're always gonna wanna meet and try to get them to change. And then you go back and you say, if they say no, then you have to do some self-reflection. That we're not doing this for ego, for a camera, or for anything else, we're going for the right reasons. For those in the faith tradition, that's often uh, is, is embodied in prayer and purification practices. It can be in many different ways. And then that's when you go into direct action. So we, you know, we know that there's all sorts of ways. In 2014, they, they were not listening to us, and so we had to go to the courts. But each of those pieces build on each other, uh, whether it's at the ballot box, whether it's in the courthouse, uh, and it's in the street uh, giving public heat. Uh, we know that, that it does change things, that people uh, will, uh, you know, don't, don't like to be, uh, have people there in general assembly over and over again. And so uh, all of those strategies are part of it, but we have a moral core in the center uh, that leads us and guides us through each of those steps. Thank you, Rob. So what, what Rob said, I can't improve, obviously, but uh, one thing that I will say is that uh, we determined that it was going to be necessary if 44% of North Carolinians are poor and low wage, then as Rob shared or Rodney shared, if just 19% of them vote, Amen. then they can vote their uh, values, vote their conscience. We don't tell people who to vote for or how to vote. Just if you are concerned about the issues that are going on in the community, vote. Amen. Which is one of the reasons why we, we have mobilized, you know, uh, phone banks to help get education out. We mobilized vans to get people to and from the polls. At no point do we tell them what to do when they get there. But involvement means everything. Okay, so and the bank, what they're banking on so often is that people who are dispossessed and feeling hopeless will just give up. And as Rob has already shared, that is not going to happen. Right. Amen. Amen. Right. Amen. Thank you. Right. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Anyone else? So I'm going to, uh, this might be, uh, ooh, I'm going to get the wrong word. Uh, 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 this might not be the right order of service, but I'm actually going to ask us to uh, run a flag to pray over us first, and then Leslie Oliver to send us out in song so that we can all go out singing together, getting our flyers, uh, meeting someone new, 
Uh, turn to your neighbor and say, I'm so glad you're here. I'm so glad you're here. Turn to the other neighbor and say, I look forward to seeing you on March 2nd. Turn to the other neighbor and say, you look really good today. You're going to look even better on March 2nd. All right. So, uh, uh, Reverend, if you would uh, close us in prayer, and then uh, Sister Leslie come and uh, sing us out with a song. Will you pray with me? Yes. Gracious and loving God, a God of many names, who envelops us and flows in and through us and around us, God of justice and mercy. God, we pray that you will trouble the sleep of legislators like you troubled the sleep of Pilate's wife. God, we pray that you will wrestle with them in their rest. Yes. God, we pray that you would go before us, be for us courage, yes. be for us wisdom, yes. be for us grace. Yes. God, start in our hearts to be people who will seek justice, liberty, and inclusion. Yes. God, start our hearts. Remind us that if you are for us, nobody can yes, be against yes, us. Yes, Amen. Yes, 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 yes. God, in this moment, help us to remember that we are a movement. Yes. yes. And we are a movement because you are with us. Oh, yes. Amen. And so, God, we go forward, declaring that we will go forward and not one step back. Amen. Because you have called us, and to your call we say yes. Yes, Lord. We pray all of this in your holy names. Yes. Amen. 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 Thank you so much. All right. We are a new unsettling force, and we are powerful. A new unsettling force, and we are here. A new unsettling force for liberation, and we have nothing to lose but our chains. Please help me sing this song. We are a new unsettling force, and we are powerful and new. Unsettling force, and we're here a new unsettling force for liberation, and we have nothing to lose but our chains. We are a new unsettling force, and we are powerful, a new unsettling force, and we're here a new unsettling force for liberation, and we have nothing to lose but our People united. Yes, yes. This is me. Say, I believe. I believe. Say, I believe. I believe. Say, I believe that we will. I believe that we will. I believe that we will win. 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 We are a new, a settling force, and we are powerful, a new, a